Howdy, folks. I'm Brian. I'm Amber. And here's some Reddit. Our first story is titled, Am I a Jerk for Making My Wife Go Back to Work by Lying About Quitting My Job as Well? My wife doesn't like her job. I was telling her to look for a job while she was still currently employed, and she wanted to take a break from work, but we cannot afford it right now due to our accidental conception. She is three months pregnant. So I made her resume. So I made her a resume and applied her for a few interviews. However, she didn't attend any of them and said she didn't feel like it. She said that she wants to be a stay at home mom. I told her that we weren't even planning this pregnancy and now we cannot afford to have her become unemployed as well. She didn't listen and just quit her job without consulting me. I was super mad at her. I told her that I didn't want to work hard while she relaxes at home. She cried and said that she doesn't want to work anymore. So I told her that I would be quitting my job as well, and then we can both stay jobless and at home with our child. I pretended to quit the job in front of her by sending an angry email to my boss, but instead it was to my friend. She was shocked and asked me why I would do such a thing. I told her tough luck and went to sleep. The next morning onwards, she got ready for an interview and started attending interviews. I called my work and took a week off. Today, my wife got a job and gave me the news at night while we were having dinner. I then told her the truth about me not quitting my job and about being a way to make her to go back to work. She got mad at me and told me I was very petty and should have just uh, dealt with it and let her stay at home. Now she's not talking to me. Am I the jerk? All right, folks, what do you think? Jerk, not the jerk, everyone's the jerk. (laughs) jerk. Kind of everyone's a jerk in my opinion here. It sounds like no one is having adult conversations and no, I mean, this is a partnership and everyone needs to work together. And, you know, I certainly think that she can feel the idea about wanting to be a stay at home mom. But if you folks can't swing it, if you can't afford it, then that's a really difficult situation. And without you having any kind of like prior agreement to being like, well, if we have a child, you can be a stay at home mom. This makes it a little bit difficult for her to put that on you, especially since this was like an unplanned pregnancy. So I think that everyone's kind of a jerk in this situation, probably OP is i mean i don't even know how to assign like levels here (laughs) i mean it's kind of like well i mean she shouldn't have quit her job without telling op but op also shouldn't have been a jerk and been like oh i'm going to uh pretend to quit my job in front of her so that she goes back to work i mean it's just just a messy situation i'd be curious what you folks think of this one so yeah anyhow take care and good luck honestly everyone's a jerk sounds like the children are having children to me Everyone's a jerk. You should have been upfront and genuine with her. You tricked her and deceived her. On the other hand, you don't have to agree for her unemployment. You don't need to be the sole breadwinner and sustain the whole family while she's at home. Your financial position doesn't allow for it. Your lack of willingness to follow through with her wishes is quite understandable. Both of you went behind each other's back and lacked communication. Both of you are at fault here. Our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for chopping down trees in my backyard even though my neighbor liked them and asked me not to? So our new neighbors renovated their backyard. So our new neighbors renovated their backyard around three months ago. Not long after they moved in, they added a pool, a hammock, a built-in grill, and a bar and basically made a resort in their own backyard. Our backyard has grass and a bunch of tall palm trees that are right behind their fence. So lately, a few of the dead leaves of our palm trees have been falling into their backyard, which wasn't an issue with the old neighbors. They rarely brought it up and we were always apologetic. The thing is, we've been considering getting rid of our palm trees for a couple of years because of the maintenance and also because we never spend time in our backyard. So when the neighbors started throwing the leaves back into our yard and yelling at us to be responsible, we decided it was time to cut them down. They didn't like this idea either. They said that when they were planting their backyard, they were considering our trees as part of their scenery. And without those trees, it would take away from their backyard. 
<laughs> they also said that there isn't enough space for them to plant their own trees, so they offered to pay for someone to come to our house and maintain our trees. This would usually be a really nice thing, but at this point in time, we were set on taking down the trees, and we also didn't want to form a relationship with our neighbors because they were very rude, and we feel like we didn't want to owe them anything if they paid for the maintenance. So two days ago, we cut down the trees, and now they're furious, complaining about us to the other neighbors, blasting us on the neighborhood forum, and giving out our address. They told us that we are not being neighborly and we're being selfish. We told them that it's our property and we can do with it what we want and they should have been responsible when they decided not to put trees in their yard. So, are we the jerks? Alright folks, what do you think? Jerk? Not the jerk? Not the jerk. You know, OP in this situation I think is fully entitled to do what, with what they want with their property and... This is kind of a classic case of don't bite the hand that feeds you. If your neighbors have something that you they you like, like their scenery, their scenic palm trees, and you're taking advantage of those scenic palm trees and you've like structured your backyard around it, then maybe just maybe you should deal with the palm leaves. <laughs> just just a thought. Just a thought. So I have a hard time faulting OP in this situation. Yeah. They just sound like entitled neighbors. Anyhow, take care and good luck. Not the jerk. Get right back on the neighborhood forum and point out that their jerk neighbor was constantly throwing fawn leaves into your yard and yelling at you about them. Your yard, your call. Waits for the Reddit tree police. I don't know what the Reddit tree police are. Yeah, I'd flat out sling back at this point in time. We rarely enjoyed these trees personally and instead maintained them for many years to help keep our neighborhood a beautiful and vibrant place. We were deeply disappointed when the new neighbors began harassing us about the trees and as we had considered removing them for a time already, we decided to best avoid future and ongoing conflicts regarding the use of our own personal space by simply having them removed. Our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for reaching out to my friend's family after he disappeared without paying rent and completely trashed my apartment? I was subletting my apartment to a, quote, friend. He was moving out in the middle of September and I responded by saying, that's fine, but I need 30 days notice, so you'll have to pay a prorated rent in October. At this point, he still hadn't paid rent for September and was about $1,500 behind in utilities. That's a lot of utilities. He texts me back a week later stating that he had moved everything out. I go to check on the apartment and 90% of his stuff is still there and it looked like a bomb had gone off. Stuff thrown everywhere. Cabinet doors missing, millions of stickers all over the walls, one giant sticker on the outside of the front door that said dirty adult uh, worker. That one baffles me. Anyways, I try to reach out, but he has blocked my phone number and unfriended me on Facebook. So I sent his mom and aunt a Facebook message asking if they had heard from him, and I was worried about him. He texted me later that day, calling me a psychopath for making his family worry about him, and basically uses that as an excuse to not pay me thousands of dollars in rent that he still owes me at this point. Am I the jerk? Alright folks, what do you think? Jerk? Not the jerk? Not the jerk. Wow, I mean, yeah, I mean, I know that you have friend in quotes here, but yeah, this is, with friends like these, you don't need enemies. So, what he did here was completely out of line. I mean, I think you were probably concerned about him because, like, he acted in such an erratic way. And I mean, it certainly you wanted to contact his family also so that you would have some kind of way of reaching out to him. At this point in time, you probably are just going to have to get uh, bring him to small claims court because he's not paying you. And then, you know, the judge can decide whether or not he's uh, been emotionally distressed enough not to pay you. <laughs> so anyhow, take care and good luck. Not the jerk, sue him and send the pictures to his family and post them on Facebook and tag him and his family members. That way, if they Google his name, when they're looking for a new place, it follows him. Not the jerk, you need a lawyer, not us geniuses on Reddit. All right, our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for making a big deal over popsicles? My daughter Sally has a dairy allergy. She's been going to the same school since kindergarten. She's seven now. 
For some reason, ice cream parties are a common thing there, between birthday treats, holidays, and just random treats that they have ice cream a lot. After the first couple of times of dealing with an upset kid because she couldn't have any dairy ice cream, and everyone else did, I went and talked to the school and asked if I picked up some of those tube juice pops, if they could freeze them whenever, I don't actually know their names, if they could give her one of those during their ice cream parties. They agreed, and I just dropped off more whenever the teacher tells me that they're running low or at the beginning of the school year. It's only October, and I've dropped off a 30-pack in August, which usually lasts all years, and she even brings some back home after her last day of school. So her teacher emailed me a heads up that there were only three left. It seemed strange, but I grabbed a pack when I went grocery shopping. So yesterday, when I dropped them off with the teacher, I jokingly said, well, you folks must be having an ice cream party every other day. Wish they did that when I was in school. And she said, oh, no, we only had ice cream a couple times, but some of the other kids saw that Sally had a popsicle, and they wanted those instead. I said, yeah, but Sally can't have ice cream. That's why I buy her the popsicles. She said, yes, I understand, but it's not really fair that she gets to have a popsicle and the other kids don't have get to have ice cream. <laughs> to- yeah, the, the fairness of this balance is so out of balance. <laughs> I like to encourage sharing, and this way Sally feels good knowing that she shared with her classmates. I said again, it's fair because she cannot eat ice cream and the other kids can. If she didn't have a dairy allergy, the popsicles wouldn't even be here, and fairness didn't seem to be a big deal when all the other kids were getting ice cream and Sally couldn't have anything. She was like, well, that was before she was in my class, and I basically gave up and left. I was telling my wife, and she said, it's just popsicle, who cares if some are given away? It's not about the popsicles, though. It's a the school didn't care when everyone else got ice cream and Sally couldn't and basically had to sit there and feel left out. But now, because she has popsicles, it's not fair. This was never an issue before she had this teacher either. I'm going to see how long this bag lasts, and then maybe I'll start sending only 10 or something. Am I the jerk for making a big deal over this? Maybe I'm overreacting. All right, folks, what do you think? Jerk? Not the jerk? Not the jerk. Yeah, I don't think OP's the jerk in this situation, and I think they actually bring up a really good point, is that, you know, the school didn't have a problem with Sally not being able to participate back when she was the only one not able to participate. Like, there wasn't anyone... I mean, this just was unbalanced. It's unfair to Sally. And you shouldn't have been the one to help make this uh, more equitable. I mean, the teachers or the school should have bought popsicles because... One kid has a dairy allergy. So I don't know why they thought that this was too much of a big deal because it just seems ridiculous that they would not accommodate a kid with an allergy. I don't know. Anyhow, take care and good luck. Not the jerk. If the teacher wants everyone to share, she can buy the popsicles herself, especially since she was bold enough to argue with you after asking you to buy more when they were bought for a specific purpose for your child. All right, folks, that's all the time we have for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, consider giving me a like. And if you didn't, consider giving me a dislike. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye. My computer is freezing because it's overheating.